Yeah, I just um, put this together and got it working and uh, wanted to show it to you. Now, what I'm talking about here is the clamping system. This, this piece that rotates, I've got to be able to make this stationary so that the... Um, when the cutter is cutting it's not flying around and originally I planned on having a clamp come on here actually over here is where the clamp was gonna go and the clamp was gonna come down and clamp on this piece and then hold it against this white piece the plastic piece and uh, I made the clamp, but I don't know where it is right now, but it really doesn't matter because I can't use it anyway. I put this, um, the bearing in here, you probably hear those balls rolling around in there, a little thrust bearing. So I couldn't use the clamp anyway because there's no way you're going to clamp this piece and that piece because of that thrust bearing. So I had to come up with something else. And the thing is I had to use what I already had there because it was too late to modify anything. So what I came up with was this, um, I got this band that goes around the inside of this piece. Now this, there was a hollow spot in here. And I had to open that up a little bit. I opened it up by another eighth of an inch. Because what happens is this band is in there and it's gonna, gonna clamp down. There's a, a wedge here on the end. So in that, there's a piston inside of here. If you look at the previous videos of this part, there's a three-quarter inch hole that goes in here. And that was the piston I was going to use to clamp this plate down so that it would clamp against this white piece. But I can't, couldn't do that because of that thrust bearing. So I had to uh, come up with something else. So this is what I came up with. This band that goes around here. There's one half here and one half here. And as this gets pulled down, it tightens on that wedge. And it clamps this piece from rotating. There's one on each side. So there's two of them. And they both work together through this... Um, automatic system which this is all preliminary you know I just I just put this together just to see if it worked and it worked I mean it, it's gonna need a little tweaking but I'm real happy that it worked the first time I went to Ace Hardware and got some uh, o-rings there's actually well, there's, there's one, two, three O-rings in this system. There's a... Inside that quarter inch hole... I got this... Uh, this thing that goes in the hole, and it's got an O-ring on it. Then there's a, another diameter here. Now I could have went straight up, made that flat, but originally I was going to use like a 5 8 5 eighths diameter O-ring. I got one here somewhere I was going to use. Anyway, originally I was going to I was going to do that, but then I I really didn't understand 
why I went so big, I, because the, the rod that goes through here, originally that rod was going to be like three eighths or something. And I said, well, I don't really need anything that big. I can go down a little bit. So I went down to a quarter. So I didn't need such a big O-ring. But anyway, this step is inside the block. And I had to make this piece with the step in it. And then the, this is the flat piece. There's a 3 eighths by quarter inch O-ring here. And this piece on top captures that O-ring and just keeps it from coming out. And that's, that's this piece here. Now this white piece on the bottom is the piece that goes in the bore and it's got that three-quarter O-ring in it. Then this piece on the top has got the, uh, the smaller O-ring the quarter inch ID, three eighths OD, and it gets captured between the the white one and this one. So this piece on the bottom, I just 3D printed that. I was going to make that out of this piece here. I already started it. There's one on each end. I was going to finish it and then cut it and then top it off and. I said, well, let me let me 3D print this because, you know, I, there's no point in making parts when I can just 3D print them because that's the whole idea behind this is to, to print these parts on a 3D printer and not necessarily machine them. And this is the uh, one of the earlier versions of what I did. I got two of them. And then I changed that that o-ring size here was a, here's the original o-ring right here that I was going to use there it is so then I decided to go with a, a smaller one so that's what I did and then this this is just a a rod with a I got a picture of that somewhere, but it might be somewhere else. Well, it's just a rod to capture the uh, this is the piston here. This is the rod coming up, and there's a pin going through there. Right now, I just got a little dowel pin going through there I gotta capture that I got the uh, I was gonna use this bolt but the head of the bolt is hitting on this piece here see that comes down and almost touches it and the head of the bolt it's too big a diameter for that. So I might just put a, a piece through there and a, drill a couple holes in the end, put a little key, little uh, cutter, cutter pin through there or something. Maybe a little uh, roll pin or something. But that's, uh, that's later on. But the air, uh, air goes in from the bottom on both of them. And I put the, uh, originally I had this, I made this one. Now this is pretty much identical, but when I did the ID, I grabbed the wrong dimension off the model and it was too thick and it didn't work because I uh, I used a smaller ID than what I should have because it had to be the uh, the inside of this ring 
And I think I grabbed the outside of this ring from the model. But anyway, that's... I got the uh, holes in there for the little rubber pieces. Because the plastic would never, would never hold against the aluminum. It would just slip. So I put three of those holes in there for those rubber pieces. You can see them here. I got three. One, two, three. And I think I might add some more over here. I'm going to add an extra one over here. One on this side, one on the other side. And then the same thing on the other side. Put another one here. Because when I clamp down on this, and I rotate it with my hand, if I rotate it really hard, it will move. But if you, if you just rotate it with a medium amount of force, it will stop. It, it, won't, it won't rotate. But um, yeah, I think by adding two more, two more pieces of rubber, it'll work out a whole lot better. See that goes down, and as it goes down, it makes it smaller. Of course, it's got to go; it's got to move in a downward direction too. Then when it goes up, it releases. Now this side. I might have to check the alignment on that because it doesn't release like I want it to. But I, I you know, I just put it together too, you know, so it's gonna gonna take a little bit. I use this uh grease from Ace Hardware. But uh yeah, I'm gonna I got my air tank here from out in the garage and had to dig out my box of fittings over here my spare box of fittings so I had plenty of fittings got plenty of tubing My little helper, one of my helpers. So I had to put a regulator on it. Actually, over here, I have my on-off from the uh, spin indexer. And I was going to plug that in, but. Um, I'm just plugging it in through the air tank. I put the regulator on it so it wouldn't blow up. I don't know how many pounds I need, but I've been working with about uh, 20 pounds, and it seems to clamp down pretty good on it. So, uh, yeah, I got, a, I got a new valve I'm working on down here. That's what it looks like without the top on it. That's uh, the new piece I'm making for it. Now this one doesn't have a whole lot of holes on it like the spin indexer does. I learned my lesson on that. And this came with the valve. The original valve. and It had... Uh, it had this thing on it. I made a made the piece for the top. Made the little the little handle part that moves back and forth. This is the piece that rides in the track. I don't need a switch on the back. 
like I said, that's the piece for the top. That's the uh, handle that moves back and forth. That was something I was working on. Before. I was working on that before. I kind of jump around, you know, it's... I put that away. Let me uh, let me plug this in and show you uh, how this works. So I'm just plugging this thing in the end here. Not much to it at this point. So I just plug that little Y connector in there and. Now it's going to do the same thing on the other side, so I'm going to I'm turn the air on. It's clamping down. Now I've turned the air off. See, if I had that valve, it would release immediately. But right now, it's it's you know it's got all the air in the lines. It's got to. Uh, evacuate so I'm gonna turn it back on clamps down turn it off now I put about 20 pounds in there so right now I gotta be careful. I got it on these plastic pieces and it uh, likes to fall off. Let me, uh. No, I don't wanna do that. Let's see, it'll rotate. Need a need a helper here. Well, I don't want to put the camera up because I don't have it all set up. Let me uh let me try to put this on the on the ground here. That way at least it won't fall. It's a tough unit. It can take it. So anyway, it'll rotate. I'm going to apply the air. No, it's not going to rotate. <laughs> of course, like, I'm trying to wedge it on that one side, and I'm pushing on it. I can't get it to rotate. So if I release the air, this is not like a real scientific type of thing going on here. Now it released. Now I can get it to rotate. Ah. Release it. But anyway, that's the, the gist of it. Uh, like I said, it's going to need a little tweaking. But uh, overall, pretty good deal. 
And I got these uh, plates on the bottom, and they got it allows the air to come out of the bottom of the piston, so it can go down. If I, if you, if there was no place for the air to go, the piston wouldn't move down. And there's a hole in the bottom too to help it, and then that also holds the spring. There's a spring inside of there, and there's a hollow spot inside that piston, and the spring rides inside the piston against that bottom piece, and that's what pushes it back up after it expels the air but uh, it's a pretty good deal this side's not releasing like I I want it to there's probably a little bind in there but this side over here is working good so yeah, I had to uh, take some fittings off, put some fittings on, and anyway, got it to work, so uh, yeah, the little, this little black, black piece on top is the same thing as this one. That was 3D printed. Now, I was trying to adjust the gap on here. I made this one look just a little bit too wide, and when I got down to the bottom, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't clamp. But uh, hey, that's the nice thing, you know. You you throw it in the printer, and you don't have to sit on a machine and machine it. And works, it works. It doesn't work. You make another one. Throw it back on the printer. All right, we're moving ahead. We get the we get this piece to where it'll clamp down nice and then we start working on the the bottom piece so when it's rotating it'll clamp down too. That's what these rails are for. It's, it's gonna be some plates that are mounted on here and it's gonna grip onto these pieces. That's gonna keep it from rotating that way. And this piece up here is gonna keep it from rotating this way. So uh Getting there. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.